Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D motion poster using Cinema 4D and Photoshop. So to get started, we will go to Cinema 4D, we'll set up our 3D scene, we'll render it and we will take this to Photoshop to finish the design of it. So let's go to Cinema 4D. So here we are in Cinema 4D. We are going to create um, a couple of shapes in here. We are going to animate them and then we are going to render them. The technology that we are going to use is um, a simulation. Before we start, I'll just show you a simple, um, with, with a simple shape, how uh, what we are trying to achieve. So I'm going to create a uh, basic uh, plane. So we have a plane in our scene and uh, you can see this right now we have a very simple plane here and along with that we'll create a sphere as well so we have sphere um, and i'm going to scale it down a bit so then move this somewhere right here so we have a sphere and um, you know a plane uh, right here so what the technology the simulation that we are going to use is that we're going to say that this particular object is actually affected by gravity and this is an object which is static, which will not move. And if this comes down and hits on it, it's going to collide. It will not go through it. It will collide. So that's a rule that we are going to set for this scene. So to do that, it's very easy. So when you go to this sphere, uh, the layer palette here, and then when you go to the sphere, you can right click here and we can tag it with a property. So here we're going to say that this is a rigid body. A rigid body is an object with a mass. So we're going to say that this sphere is going to be a rigid body. So we have said that. So now if you just play it, you can see that the sphere just goes down because it is pulled by the gravity. But here the problem is that this is going through the plane, uh, which is not a good sign, right? This is not stopping that. So we have to actually say the plane uh, tag it with a collider body. So it says that if an object hits on it, it is going to collide with it, it will not pass through. So now if you play it, you can see that this is stopping right there. So this is basically the concept that we are going to use for this motion poster. But we will do it with different shapes and characters. We will make it an elaborate scene. But I just want to show you the concept of simulations here. Um, there are a couple of more things that you can do. So if you, if you click on this particular tag, you can set the property of it. So for instance, you're going to come in and say that um, this particular plane has more bounds uh, in here. So if, you, if I'm increasing the bounce value of it, then play it, you can see that it's bouncing. So I can raise up the value really high and the property, the ball is starting to bounce. You can set the same property to the sphere as well. I can say that the bounce value of the sphere is also high. So now if you play it, it's going to do this because the bounce value of that sphere also is high. I'll just reduce it to maybe 5 and let's see what happens here. Okay, it's 5 right now. Let's make it 10 and let's play it back again. Okay, this is good enough. So uh, this is how the whole simulation works, right? So what we are going to do is we will actually do it with a real poster that we want to create. So let's delete all of this and let's start building our scene from scratch, right? So what I want to create is a bunch of alphabets <coughs> coming down and falling into a piece of paper. So let's build our paper, which is basically a plane. We can do the same thing with this plane. I'm just going to use the scale modifier to scale the plane. Um, to make it look sort of like a paper, a sheet of paper. This is good enough. So uh, I have this right now. Now what we need to do is, and instead of spheres here, we need characters, we need text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the text button here and it creates a text. So there are a couple of texts that we can create. If you press and hold this, you can see that there is a text and there is a text line. So if you create a text right here, it comes with the extrusion already applied to it. So it has a 3D, uh, you know, uh, weight and everything. If you're taking a text spline, it just comes with a shape and you have to add extrusions and other parameters to it to give it a 3D uh, depth. But this is what we want. We have the text and it has a 3D depth to it. So, but what we want is we want it to be separate characters, right? So what we'll do is we'll go down here, we'll change this to maybe A. So this is um, 
the character that we want to create and we'll change the font of this so we'll just go to the ui phone thing uh, this is currently set to ui phone and then i will change it to something a little more um, with some characters so rockwell actually uh, seems good it has um, an old typewriter kind of look and it, it it works so yeah this is pretty interesting you can scale it down so i'm just going to take the scale of it i'll just bring it down a bit um, i think this is okay now what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to duplicate this uh, a couple of times. So I'm going to hold the Alt Option, um, the, uh, the Command key, and then drag it to create some duplicates. Every time I'm creating a duplicate, I'm just going to change the character. So I'm just going to change it to C. I'll just keep changing this to uh, different characters. So then I have the D here. Let's, let me just quickly do this. Yeah, I think this is fine. We have um, characters. I'm just going to uh, randomly make it uh, different, position it slightly. Just going to move it like that. So we have this many. So if you look at our um, layer palette right now, we can see that we have around uh, eight text layers right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a clone for all of this. So um, I am going to click on the cloner button so let's click and create a cloner um, modifier right here select everything and then drag it into cloner so right now what we have is in the cloner we are cloning all these characters and we can see that it's started cloning so if i'm coming here i can change it to what format do i want it so do i want it to be on an object do i want it in a linear fashion do you want it on radial um, there are different parameters there a grid so i think um, i'm going to go with a radial right now and i can change the count of this i can change the radius of this um, i can offset this as well right so we can keep creating it but i think uh, for this uh, we will actually use a grid so we have a grid here we'll create a couple of uh, variations here so i have um, a grid like this um, we can scale this the whole cloner thing scale it down a bit so it comes in like this let's move the cloner a little up so we have uh, the cloner and everything coming like this maybe we'll scale this a little down yeah i think this sort of looks okay so we have uh, this we can increase the count again so i'm just going to increase the count um, Right, so we have this count here you can also change the size from here so that it will be more uh, it will not actually go beyond uh, the uh, the plane so i think we have something like this right now it, it is decent okay so what we are going to do is now uh, we can see here that everything that is in the cloner is actually facing in the or is, is in the same axis um, we don't want that. We not want a little bit of randomization happening here and every character should look a little different. So what we are going to do is we have the cloner selected we can go to the mo graph tool, go to effector and click on a random. So immediately you can see that okay, this got a little random right now. Let's go to random and click on the parameters and what are the parameters that we want to be affected by the random tool. So if you don't want the position to be randomized, you can uncheck that. Uh, if you want the rotation to be randomized, you can click on that and you can change the value of randomness uh, and the rotation of it. So I think that actually works. The rotation is something that we want to be randomized. And you can see the effect taking place right here. As I'm moving this, the rotation of the text is actually being randomized. And uh, that actually works for us. So now it is random. The cloner is in a random mode right now. Now uh, we have pretty much everything ready here we need to start the simulation just to do this uh, it's the same example that we did we're going to right click on this we are going to go to simulation tag and we can say that this is actually a rigid body so the cloner is a rigid body the plane is now a collider body so go to here and then select collider body let's click play and see how what we have okay so we have the simulation running and it's pretty interesting 
Right, so once you're happy uh, with your simulations, uh, it's time to render um, our design. So before that, we'll add some material to the uh, cloner as well. So what we'll do is we'll just go to uh, create material, new default material, and add a gray uh, color to the cloner. So we have that happening right here. Okay, it's interesting. So uh, now that our setting is done, let's add a quick light and then we will see how the, um, you know, scene looks to us right now. So before creating a light, let's go and look for a HDRI map. So HDRI maps are environment information that we can use to light up a 3D scene. So I'm gonna go and click on this uh, link and then click download maybe this map right so that's there uh, we will go and create a material for this so the material here so we'll turn off the color here turn off the reflectance go to luminance and then um, load the texture that we just downloaded right now so it's in our desktop we have that right we have the material right here so once we have this uh, we are going to go to the wall settings create a sky and we are going to add the material that we just created so let's go to window um, material manager choose our material that we have and then drag it to the sky so we have uh, the material which is added to this sky as well uh, let's go and change some attributes here so let's go to the render settings and uh, we're going to go to uh, effects and ambient occlusion so it is basically going to create shadows uh, inner shadows or objects in the scene we're also going to add something like global illumination so the environment is going to lit up the scene so we have all of that set let's quickly render the viewport and see how this looks to us right now it looks pretty good so let's go back to our scene now what we need is we need a camera so that we could look at it from the top angle so to do this before doing or setting up the camera what we are going to do is we are going to go to the render settings and we're going to set up how do you want to render this out so i want to take the output in a um, 1080 and 1920 height i want to take the whole animation the entire frame of animation which is available so zero to 90 frames it is going to render the entire animation here and i want to save it um, as a as an mp4 file on my desktop so we have set up all these things now uh, we have to create a camera so that we can control this scene it's not very important uh, to create a camera you can actually change your perspective but it's easy uh, when you have a camera in place you can change your lensing and everything so let's go to the um, camera settings here and create a camera click on this icon next to the camera so that you are right now viewing through the camera so i'm just going to change the camera settings right here so we have it and i'm going to zoom in to the view that i want this is what we are getting at the end and it looks neat so what we are going to try and do right now here is that um, we will start rendering it so 90 frames in here so we're going to click on the render button right here so render to picture viewer and uh, it's going to start rendering to the file that we already assigned it to so let's click on render and let it do the job so you can see that it's starting to render now we have the rendering um, done and this is how it looks right now it's pretty cool so what we're going to do is we're going to design the post on top of it so we're going to use this rendering this mp4 file just like how would use uh, how would we use a, an image uh, in our design so let's go to photoshop here i'm going to create a new file and the dimension we will actually keep it the same as how we rendered it from Cinema 4D. So 1080 width and 1920 is the height. We don't need an artboard and it can be just um, an RGB file like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rendering, we're gonna drag and drop it into our composition. So we have um, 
the image coming in uh, as a smart object and that's a video so we just call it video and we'll go to window and turn on the timeline in photoshop and click create video timeline so what we currently have is a timeline editor just like in any video software we can actually uh, see the timeline and the duration of the clip so uh, if you click play the video will start playing the rendering will start work uh, So we have um, our canvas ready. Now what we can do is we can start designing our poster just like how you would do uh, for any other design projects. So uh, let me start with a type. So I'm gonna speak um, a type and then you know uh, type what we basically want. Um, I want a mono typeface for this. So I'm just gonna search for mono typefaces and I will, all right, this works for me. Right, so our poster is ready. Now uh, we have all the other elements. Let's group all the other elements into one category. So we have um, all of that into one group and we have the video in another group as well. Let's bring it all the way to the beginning. So in video, we can see that the text and everything is superimposed and it is working perfectly. Um, if you want to do a little bit of color correction, which I want to do, so I'm going to just select this and I'm going to just go to control L and then I'm going to just change a couple of parameters here. So just bring it down the darkness of this a little bit and then increase the whiteness in the background. So it is, it is more clearly white here. We have that. And uh, if you, if you, in case, if you want to add an audio track, you can do it here. I'm not going to add an audio track to this poster. So I'll go and uh export this so go to export click on render video 